know, you see, I'm, I'm making something really cool, and I'm just about to take it past the point where it's attractive, and I'm starting to know when that is. So I've stopped myself. See, look, isn't that pretty? It's going to be a copper switch plate cover. It's got a kind of Pennsylvania German theme. And uh, they're really easy to make. And they really improve your house, because once I sold a house, and they, the people that bought it specified that I had to leave all the switch plates, because they looked like this. They were kind of neat. This hasn't been waxed yet, so or, or you know sealed. But isn't that pretty? And then this is the same thing before I put the finish on it. It's the copper starting to corrode a little bit. And then this is a whole other thing, which is it's again covered with copper, but then you leave some leaves on it soaking in the finish solution, and then you get that pretty etched leaf pattern. So I, this is really fun. And then I found out how to punch copper, so I did this lamp. Unfortunately, I, used, I was going for a kind of African look. Well, I think I got it, but I'm not sure I got it well. But And it looked a bit too much like a pumpkin, because it was kind of orange. So I colored it green, hoping that would disguise it. But it's a nice little night light. And then over here, I traced a bunch of leaves, maple leaves, in fact, and um, punched them out. Now, I don't think that's maybe the way to go, because it looks a bit repetitive and boring. but. This is a really neat design, and I even made a concrete base for it. Ta-da! And you have to use fairly lightweight copper. You know, it should be pretty pliable in your hands. And then the actual embossing is done with this tool, which is called a stylus. And it has one little ball end on it, and the other end is a sharp little pointy bit, like a pin. And that'll pierce the metal if you're doing some punch work, like on this particular African-style lantern. OK, so I wanted to show you about how to do all these things, starting with this embossing thing. See how that's sort of iridescent? Isn't that a neat finish? You know how you do that? OK, I'll tell you. You just get a scrubby thing like this, and you go like this with it, right? And it clouds it up and gives it, and you kind of go over it again and again. And you get this really hot looking finish, like they use on bar surfaces sometimes. All right, so that looks kind of cool. Or if you're geeked out like myself, you can get a magical disc scrubby on the end of your drill. Now watch this baby go to work. See it? The more you do it, it gets sort of three-dimensional. Isn't that cool? Love that. So anyway, that's what I did here. I did the disc thing. And then I flipped it over, and I've been pressing this little stylus with the ball end um, into the actual work. So it makes these nice, deep channels. And then, you know, this is where I, I just should stop. I started putting little dots all around the outside of this thing, and I thought, you know, it's going to look really bad soon. So now that that's done, I can actually you know, fold it over this thing. By the way, um, th I've edged this because I'm a bit accident prone. So I got this tape at a stained glass store. It's, it's actual copper metal tape. And it's got one sticky side. So you peel off the backing and just edge it so that you don't cut yourself on the sharp edges. Because they do, they, they do, you know, these, these are just like scissors. But they tend to leave sharp little snags for your fingers. OK, so I'm going to put this like so, and just fold it over like this. And then I'll just take, you can use a knife if you want, or a chisel, and you just, actually, I should, before I do this, I'll do it from the other side, because then I can fold it under without trouble. So see how, I, if you work on newspaper, the, the chisel, and this is an old hacked up chisel, by the way goes right, right through. So I'll just finish wrapping this baby around. Then we'll move on to making lamps. As you work away at a project, you're in a state of optimism. You only believe in the best possible outcome for your efforts. Whether this is a state of grace or pure denial is only obvious when you're done. OK, I'm just, ri I'm just folding this little copper switch plate cover over the switch plate. And it's sometimes necessary to trim a little bit of the excess out of the corners so that you get a neat fold. 
Oh, I'm getting a messy one. Okay, so I'm gonna have to convince it a little bit with my chisel. There and there. I want those, those knife pleats like on the corners of your bed. If you were taught to miter the corners, see how pretty that looks? This one doesn't look so good, so I'm not gonna show you that. Okay, and also you wanna actually push, um, take an old popsicle stick or something and push the little hem down so that it really stays out of your way when you're attaching it to the wall. Pretty! Okay, so now you wanna take this, just a nail and punch through where the little, uh, the nails, their screws go in that hold it to the wall. But the screws that they give you are always the same color as the switch plate, like cream colored, or in this case, they're green. And that's going to look but ugly. So what you do is dab it um, with a little bit of nail polish or clear shellac is what I'm using. And then you can buy copper and bronze powder in art supply shops. And you just get a little bit of the, the copper powder. They come in little tubs, tubes, whatever these are. And look, it goes coppery colored. So when that drops through, that's gonna look really sweet. See? Pretty. So that's the way to get around that little issue. Okay, so now let's try punching some copper to get an, a whole entire lamp set up. To, Cause you know, you got the switch plates, you gotta have lamps that match. So you wanna have a sheet of copper and this this is a great big piece, and rather than go through the torture of putting this tiny little tape all over the edges, I'm gonna hem it in a different way. So I just need this board, and I'll turn the copper over, and I'm gonna figure out where I want my hem to be. Then I'm gonna roll the board up like this and kink the copper like that, and then just fold it over like so. Now this works especially with really thin copper. If your copper's heavier than this, this will give you a bit of a fight. But rolling it out tends to convince it to lie still. This is a cool pasta roller or something that I got at a flea market, but you can also just use a, a, you know, a rolling pin like for pies. Okay, so I'll hem all the edges. you hear people say, I couldn't do that, I'm not artistic. Well, they've got it wrong. Thinking you have to be artistic just sets impossible standards. But if instead you think, well, I'll just fool around a bit, you can really surprise yourself. Because you're giving yourself permission to be a goof, and the gods of art always reward that. Once you've got the edges smoothed down on the metal, you have to pick a design to draw on the metal. So I'm gonna go for a woodland grasses kind of a thing. And it's actually really fun to work from a real thing instead of from your head because then you just get weird psycho designs like this. So, you know, stretch your abilities and try drawing something from actual life. So, by the way, this stuff tends to, it's so soft, it tends to be very convincing to just roll it. If it's popping up on you, just give it another roll. All right, so, so these are meadow grasses, so they just kind of go straight up like this in spots, and then, then these little curly bits kind of fold down, kind of like they're tired on a hot day. And then there's, there's this stuff, which is sort of like little brush cut things. So some of the shapes are very loose and floppy, and others are perky and pert. So try to transfer it onto your metal, and then we'll pick the tools that we need to punch it out so that it looks, you know, realistic. Okay, my copper lamp is coming along. I'm using a bunch of different tools to pierce it. So it's getting, the design is starting to come up. And you can't really see it unless you put a light behind it, but it's starting to look, you know, it's looking like a bit of meadow grass. So here's the deal. If you have a knife like this, you really don't need anything else. However, if you're hot dogging a little and you have an old beat up chisel, that makes a slightly more intense line. For example, 
Um, down here around the, the stems, if you want a thicker line, that chisel will get, give it to you. Okay, so those are thicker lines. And the chisel, you know, you don't need to hammer it at all. It just walks through the copper. This is a chip carving knife, and the guys who sold me this would kill me if they saw me using it on copper, but it's great, because look, it's, it can do quick corners because it's, you're, it's sharp on the heel of it, so you can actually get curves more easily than you can with a straight implement. So that's kind of cool to use. Then the knife just works the way you would expect, but it's good to work from the top of the design down. It looks more natural because it's sort of thicker at the top of the cut. Now, if the, if the lines aren't opening enough for your uh, individual taste, you can actually walk them a little bit like that to open them up a bit more, okay? If they're opening up too much and you think it's starting to look messy, then just roll it again on the back and that closes them up a little bit. All right, so, um, and one other tool that's really fun is the, that little sharp pointy tip on the stylus that I was telling you about earlier, because that's what I'm gonna use to do the perky little standing up things. You just poke right through. So it looks like a bunch of little tiny dots. But it looks really cool with the light coming through. So I'll just finish this up and then we'll go ahead and mount it on a base. And I'll even show you if you want, if you don't want candles, if you want to make a night light, for example, I'll show you how to do that. Swiss philosopher Henri Frédéric Emile said that the great artist is the simplifier. I try to simplify everything I make if only by stopping before I get carried away and really overdo it. My design's finished. Looks really pretty. And now I've cut tabs because I have to mount it on this backing. This is a bigger sheet. And I, I did it all up. I sanded it and disked it. So it looks really cool, see? And it's hemmed quite heavily on the back so that it, it's nice and strong because it's going to need to fold behind this, or like this, only right side up. Now, the tabbing thing is really easy. You just punch through the backing with a chisel, and the tabs are made just by taking a slice and then folding back the bit that's left over. And you know what? I got to say, it, see over here, it's, it's much nicer if this thing is just kind of a random shape, so don't be too precise. <laughs> Precision is overrated, that's my motto. Okay, and then I'm just going to roll the edge again. So those little tabs need to be between three quarters of an inch and an inch long, because you have to sort of zigzag them on the back. However, before I go any further, if I want the back to stay reflective, I have to clear coat it with something because the copper is going to tarnish within a day or two and it won't be as reflective. So you can use a water-based urethane or just plain old shellac, which I'm going to use, which is made from bug excretions, did you know that? Mixed with uh, alcohol. It makes a great nail polish in a pinch. So I'm just going to clear coat this whole um, backing with shellac and it dries really quickly so it's kind of a fun thing to use. With water-based urethane you have to wait about six hours. But this will dry in about 10 minutes. Okay, so I'll put this aside. And now we're going to flame this baby. And better put the lid back on the shellac first, because it's alcohol-based, and that could be quite a party. So just get, a, uh, get your torch ready. And the longer you leave the heat on, the more interesting colors the thing goes. Oh, perhaps my safety glasses would be in order. See how it starts to darken up and then go blue and iridescent and green and lovely colors? I love that. This is the coolest thing. Isn't that neat? If you ever have co copper you're working with and it's gone brittle, you can actually just reheat it with a torch and it gets soft again. Woo! See the different parts, hitting the metal with different parts of the flame, either the really blue part where it's most hot or the 
other, the tip of the flame turns it different colors. Love this, just love it. Okay, so if you go a little bit too far and you get a kind of gunmetal thing, that gray color I've got in the center there, you can scrub it with a bit of vinegar and a, and a scrubby and it'll come clean and you can start over. But I, I'm just gonna go with it. All right, so I'm just gonna squirt it with a bit of water to make sure it's cool. There we go. Now, if you don't wanna do a, a flamed finish like this, you got other options, baby. And I'll tell you what they are. This copper, you love this, this pretty turquoise color? This has been clear coated and this side has not, so it's still powdery and unstable. But this was achieved with my very special combination which I found through diligent scientific experiment witness. This is ammonia mixed with vinegar in equal parts. Is that not the most beautiful thing? You don't have to go to a chemist and get cupric nitrate and all the stuff that I've had to try before. You just, you just hit it. See, I really had lots of experiments. But watch this. I'll just hit it with a bit of ammonia mixed with a bit of vinegar, and it starts to go to work right away. Use pickling vinegar, though. Don't use normal vinegar. So they just mix together, and you can... You can get a more powdery color, like this color, which is very, very soft, with equal parts ammonia. Wait a second, I've got my recipe right on it. Two parts vinegar, one part salt water, pretty salty, like pickling kind of salt, and one part ammonia, and then you get this soft color. But if you want the really dramatic color, like this, it's not working very fast. Let me hit it with a hairdryer. And if you take it outside in the sunlight, it works incredibly fast. This isn't working very fast. But let's give it a few minutes and you'll see, it really comes up great. You can also take a, a vat of pickling vinegar and just leave your copper switch plates or whatever soaking in it and it comes out with a fairly deep, vivid, more blue turquoise. This whole thing was left, this is just um, five coats of vinegar followed by one coat of salt water. So that did a job too. But you remember, you gotta finish it because it's, look, it's, it's really powdery. My little lantern's almost finished now. I'm just putting the tabs in place. So I cut through the backing with the chisel. And then to, to secure them, an L, just a simple L isn't enough. So what you do is you zigzag it. So you go this way first and then that way. So this, this will be more clear. One way to really cinch it down and then another fold in it to really lock it in place. And then it goes so pretty. Now, it's, it'll stand on its own, which is great, but if you'd rather have a base under the actual little candle, you can pour your own base like I did on this one. And I just used a piece of styrofoam and carved out the design, you know, just traced it. And then poured mortar, which I blackened with black uh, pigment, which you can buy, cement coloring. All right, but you can also just use a rock if you want, because that works. So pretty. Okay, also, I just waxed this with a little non-toxic, uh, just food, food grade wax so that it would be all shiny and keep its luster. So you can do amazing things with metals. I mean, look at the copper thing, it's great. Now, um, Carol Ann Castrate works in tin. She's traveled all over the world learning about art and she stopped in Mexico and took a tinsmithing course. So she did these switch plate covers, which are really neat. They were for somebody's kitchen. She did a custom job. So there's a, a fork and a spoon. <laughs> They're cool, eh? She's got tools I wouldn't even dream of having because look, she does crimping. This is a picture frame. And she does, I don't even know how she got some of these effects. They're beautiful. And this is her cat, Frida Gatto. Gatto is Spanish for kitten. And then this is Tracy Cameron's work. Now she's mostly a jeweler and she loves to put together odd bits of things and she loves a rough rustic look, which is my favorite. Now look at this, is that not precious? It's sterling silver and copper and it's a little 
piece of birthday cake. And she's quite a good cook, so she's written out the uh, recipe for soft ginger cake from the late 1800s on the side here. That's called stamping. You, you stamp the metal with steel stamps to get the letters. Cool. So, totally rocking. That is what copper is. And so you have fun with that. Look how pretty. Okay, I just got to get the lights. This is going to be cool. Huh? Completing an artistic project, no matter how minor, is always satisfying, but often messy. This is because your mind is preoccupied with a bigger vision, and that's a gift. Having the ability to be tidy is a gift, too. And some of us just don't have that gift. 